Two of the best players in the state of Ohio lead their teams out to Byers Field on Saturday night for the Region 1 final in the OHSAA playoffs. The playoffs have been absolutely outstanding, and last week it was Tim McVay who shattered five different records for St. Ignatius High School as McVay ran right through the North Royalton Bears and the Wildcats shut out North Royalton 56 to nothing. They advanced the regional final, and walking out of Lakewood Stadium, they were thinking that they would probably be facing the St. Edward Eagles. The Eagles had a 56-35 lead over the Menor Cardinals, and then Mitch Trubisky came alive. He struck with his favorite targets in Brandon Fritz and Connor Krasanchik, and the Menor Cardinals advanced with 28 unanswered to top St. Edward 63-56 in an outstanding OHSAA playoff game. With that, welcome to Across the Table on the St. Ages Broadcasting Network. He's Greg Zeit, and I'm John Fanta, and Greg... It will now be the 15th time both these two teams will meet in Menor and St. Ignatius. The fourth time in a span of two seasons, a rematch of the 2011 regional final game. Wow, these two teams have really faced and have really formed now a rivalry. Exactly. When you look across the state, this is one of the better rivalries in the state of Ohio, especially the last couple of years when they've been matching up consistently in the regular season. And now we're going to see two years in a row the Wildcats and the Cardinals facing in the playoffs. And when you look at the all-time series, the Wildcats lead 10-4, to but still it's produced its fair share of very entertaining games, a lot of close matchups, and some really fun games to watch. And this Saturday is going to be no different. You said men are coming off a huge comeback win over St. Ed's. They scored 28 unanswered to knock off the Eagles, who were the number one ranked team in the state. And you get the Wildcats coming off what is arguably their best game of the season. So we've got a good one to look forward to. It will be very interesting to watch this game being played at Byers Field. And for those wondering about the scenario in the OHSAA, Menorin beating St. Edward, the number one seed in Region 1, overtakes the higher end of the bracket. And through agreements, the OHSA ultimately decided Byers Field would be the site of this game. So for all you heading to Byers, Wildcats will actually be the visitor team in this on the visitor side. So it's going to be a little bit odd being the guest in some ways at Byers Field. But taking on a Cardinal offense that was absolutely phenomenal, they have been phenomenal since that Week 3 loss, as we go back to saying age 48-21. Since that loss, Greg, Menor has put up 40 or more in each and every game since that contest. Yes, their schedule has not been the same as the Wildcats, but still, this offense continues to hit its peak, and it looks like Menor has formed a magical run. Yeah, Menor's really been improving really all season long, but especially since that Week 3 setback to St. Ignatius. And taking a look at that game, the Wildcats, one of their best games on the season. You look at it defensively to hold Menor to 21 points in that game. That was, you know, by a considerable margin, the fewest points Menor scored in a game this season. The Wildcats won 48-21. to The game may have been a little closer than the score indicates, but either the way, the Wildcats really dominated in that one. Offensively, you had Tim McVay rushing for a shade under 200 yards and three scores. Mike Lamana threw for just about 300 yards and three scores. And then the defense was really the story that they were getting pressure on Trubisky play after play. Trubisky was well under 50% completions for his passes. He wasn't able to run much, and the Wildcats really held the Cardinals high-flying offense at bay, and you got to give Brian Fisher a shout-out. He had two big interceptions in that game as well for the Wildcats back in Week 3. Yeah, if you remember that game, the Cardinals got within 16, and it looked like if they could find a way to get a stop, that maybe they could really get back into striking distance on the Wildcats, and on the ensuing kickoff after a Mitch Trubisky touchdown, on the ensuing kickoff, they recovered the kickoff off a fumble by the Wildcats, and then... As Trubisky was heading down the field, you said it, Brian Fisher picked him off, and from there, that really sealed the deal as the third quarter was beginning to wind down, and then the Wildcats were able to take command. And that offense then in Week 3 was phenomenal. We've seen an offense in the past couple weeks before Saturday that was having their struggles, but Tim McVay, what a banger, Greg. And the way that this kid runs, it's been absolutely phenomenal to watch. Seven touchdowns on Saturday nights. And that puts him at 57 on his career, breaking Eric Haddad's record of 51. Now he has 35 on the 2012 season, breaking Eric, Eric's record of 33. And on top of that, also breaking the game record now with seven touchdowns in a game for the Wildcats. That's the most in a St. Ignatius in a game in St. Ignatius history. 
It's amazing. Have. The OHSA said that they would put that record for most touchdowns in a half. OHSA history, obviously, well, going back, will explain it to you the most in a single game in OHSA history is 12. That happened back, though, in, in 1923. So they're going to put it in their miscellaneous category for the most in a half as McVay had seven touchdowns, and it was just amazing. My favorite run of the night from him, it actually, I loved his 35-yarder where he cut it out to the right and just blasted through a North Royalton defender, and then from there, just literally walked to the end zone. But Greg, at one point, he cut it out to the left, and this is the thing about him that separates him from other backs. He bounces off a tackler, and as he's going down, he continues to lunge forward, and from the 40 to the 30-yard line, all off of extra efforts from him, just lunging forward and getting five more yards as he cut it up to the 35 and, and got out to the 30. It's just phenomenal the way that this kid runs to this game for the Wildcats. And you, you just mentioned some of the players to really watch, but what do you think are the keys to this game? All right, well, the two I mentioned defensively for the Wildcats, I'll go back to those. One has got to be Tom Fanning on Brandon Fritz just trying to contain the wide receiver for the Cardinals. The second one I just mentioned is, you know, getting pressure on Trubisky, especially Berger. And then the other thing, as far as the Wildcats' offense goes, I'm just looking for another big game from Tim McVay. We've seen the men of run defense be very suspect at times. They gave up, you know, 200 rushing yards and three touchdowns to McVay in Week 3. They gave up a lot of rushing yards to Dwayne Aaron of St. Edward last week. So, you know, look for another big game from McVay. Maybe not seven touchdowns again, but he'll definitely be a factor on offense and help to provide some more balance. Here are a couple keys to this game from me. I think it is so important that the Wildcats not only set the tone in this ball game, but at the same time you want to keep your foot on the gas pedal. Last week, St. Edward learned the hard way that they had a big lead, looked like that they were going to be heading to the regional final, but they could not close out the Cardinals. And in week three, even, the Cardinals tried to battle back. They got within 16, two possessions of the Wildcats. And as much as St. Edward is dominating that game, the Cardinals still were threatening. This offense is going to threaten in the second half for sure. It doesn't matter if they're down by three touchdowns, four touchdowns. This is an offense that, like that, just with the blink of the eye, they can be right back in the game. My second key is the matchup of the line of scrimmage. I think that St. Ignatius' offensive line has been really rock solid throughout. We forget to talk about them. Tim McVay, he talked about them. The first thing he said was that he wanted to thank the guys in front of him who do such a nice job for him week after week, blocking for him. And that offensive line has been very solid. On the other side, of course, Cavalek Golic off the edge. That's certainly big. And Dave Katusha just plunging through the middle. And then I think St. Ignatius has to watch for Nick DeLisa. And Menner has tried to incorporate a running game. So the Wildcats have got to be ready to see possibly more of that. Coach Trevisano always against St. Ignatius with, with Coach Kyle. They form a great coaching matchup. So the Wildcats have got to be ready for the run game of Menner. It's something that people don't talk about a lot, but those carries of six, of, excuse me, three, four yards then to make it second down and six, and then third down and manageable, that's huge for Menner. Yeah, to get production on first down and then give Trubisky second and short, third and short, that opens up a lot of opportunities to take shots down the field and, you know, things like that. And when the Wildcats and the Cardinals played back in Week 3, Menner did have DeLisa in running the ball. They didn't go to him a whole lot. As the season's gone on, you know, Menner and Coach Trivasano have learned that, you know, they have to be able to run the football in some capacity to be able to win in the postseason. We saw last week, you know, not only did Trubisky have two rushing touchdowns, the team had three others. I believe DeLisa had two of them. But you look at it, they know they have to be able to run the football to win this time of the year, and they have gotten a lot better at doing that. You may think as we near Thanksgiving in November that the weather can start to, to get dicey. Sometimes you can get the moisture and in the air, but on Saturday night it's going to be pretty fine. It's supposed to be in the 40s, maybe dropping down to the upper 30s, but despite the temperature drop in the 40s, 30s, typical November weather, that's going to be pretty fine for the ball game. No moisture really in the air. So that offense last week, they had pretty good weather considering the temperatures. That's what this offense really needs because when there's moisture in the air, you said it, right? They have to be able to run the football, and they've tried to incorporate that. And I think we both can agree that the turnover battle is huge because St. Ignatius, before Saturday, they were having issues with that, and you cannot turn the football over in games like these. 
And that was one of the best things we saw Saturday is the fact that the Wildcats didn't really turn the football over. And then you look at a team like Menor. If you give them extra possessions, extra shots at the end zone, with that offense, they're going to be able to take advantage of some sort of course. You know, turning the football over is a must not for the Wildcats. Well, it's the Cardinals and the Wildcats. The number two seeded St. Ignatius Wildcats in Region 1 taking on the number four seeded Menor Cardinals. The regional final comes to you from Byers Field. It's the fourth playoff meeting between the two. The Wildcats lead in that series 2-1, and they also lead in the all-time series. The 15th meeting coming, St. Ignatius leads it 10-2-4. 7 o'clock on Saturday night at Byers Field. We'll get you ready with the best pregame show out there at 6.30 on the SIBN, live audio. We do understand, of course, that the game is on TV, so for those that can see it, turn down the TV and turn us up on the SIBN because we are pretty much commercial-free. We try to limit those, and we'll give you as much analysis as you can have throughout a broadcast on the San Angeles Broadcasting Network. Greg, it's going to be a lot of fun on Saturday night as these two teams meet again. That it will be. I don't exactly expect another 48-21 to 21 game. I think it will be a little bit closer, especially you know, now that these games really are. Of course, they're important because they're playoff games, but you think about it, we're down to the final eight teams in the state. This is for a chance to the final four. It's absolutely phenomenal. The OHSA playoffs have been terrific. The Wildcats and the Cardinals to conclude Region 1 play for the Region 1 final championship Saturday night at Byers Field. 6.30 pregame on the SIBN, 7 o'clock. The kickoff comes to you right here on the St. Asia's Broadcasting Network. Thanks for watching.